In the last episode, we learned some basic blender stuff. So now let's put it to use on the single most important model you'll ever make, a Minecraft cow. The Minecraft cow's body is 10 by 12 by 18. So we could just scale this default cube by 1.8 on the Y axis and 1.2 on the X axis. And this would be the body object done. But that's no fun. Let's learn some new stuff. Hit Control Z twice. Everything on this model is going to be very cube shaped, so let's set everything up to make it easier to place on a grid. As you can see in the viewport overlay, you can manually adjust the scale of the grid, but we're not going to do that. If you hit N and bring up the Object Transforms panel, you can see the cube's dimensions are 2x2x2. Two by two by two. But in order to make it more simple to match with our cow blueprints measurements, we are going to make that cube 1x1x1. One by one by one. So go into front ortho view. Numpad 5 to switch from perspective to ortho, and numpad 1 to switch into front view. Until now, everything we've done has been in object mode, in which we can only apply transforms to our objects as a whole. But we want to edit our objects with more precision. So hit tab to enter edit mode. You'll see up here we now have some extra buttons and menus. These three buttons with pictures on them are Vertex, Edge, and Face Select. Face Select lets you select the object's faces directly. Holding Shift while selecting will allow you to select multiple things. And look, we can also grab, rotate, and scale faces. Edge Select lets you select edges individually. You can move, rotate, and scale these as well. And finally, Vertex Select, which allows you to select and move vertices. You can use Tab to switch between Edit and Object Mode at will. Let's make the cow's head. As you can see on the blueprint, the head's dimensions are 8x8x6. While in edit mode and vertex select, hit A to select all vertices. Hit S and type 0.5 to scale by half. Now if we tab into object mode, we can see the dimensions of the object are 1x1x1. One by one by one. In the top middle of the 3D viewport, there are some options. This magnet is the snapping menu. Click the icon to turn it on. Click the drop-down menu next to the magnet icon and notice how we can change between quite a few snapping options. For this occasion, we'll be using increment. Now is a good time to point out these four circles in the upper right-hand corner of the 3D viewport. These are our shading options. We're currently in solid mode. The other ones are cool too, but for now let's use wireframe mode. Now we're all set up for placing some vertices. If you hit C, it'll enable circle select. You can then click drag to select everything you want to. Select the four vertices on this side, then right-click or hit Escape to close Circle Select. Grab these vertices with G and move them over one increment. Same with the other side. In right view, select the front vertices and move them back two on the grid, and then move the back forward two. Now move the top and bottom in one. We now have the basic shape of the cow's head with the correct pixel dimensions. A to select all. I'm just gonna turn on the screencast mod I have so you can see all the buttons I press. So with the entire head selected, in edit mode, hit Shift D to duplicate this shape and move it over here somewhere. Now reshape it to be the cow's horns like so. Double tapping A will deselect all. If you want to select the entirety of a connected shape but not everything, select at least one vertex on the shape and hit Ctrl L to select everything connected to that vertex. With circle select active, holding Shift will circle deselect. Hit a bunch of wrong buttons and then Ctrl L to select all. Shift D to duplicate, and then move the duplicated horn to the other side of the head. You can now see our beautiful cow face coming together. Rename this object to head so we don't forget what it is. Tab into object mode. Shift A to bring up the add object menu, add a cube. Position it to become the body. Let's pull up our blueprint again. The body is 10 pixels tall, 12 wide, and 18 long. Our cube is 20 by 20 by 20. So with this new object selected, hit tab to enter edit mode. Move the back vertices forward too. Click the viewport overlays and check edge length. We can now actively see the length of our edges as we're sizing our objects. Move the sides in 4. And the bottom up 10. That's the body done. A to select all, Shift D to duplicate, place this shape to become a leg. I don't want this leg to be part of the body object. So while this bottom shape is selected, hit P to bring up the separate menu and choose by selection. Now select our new objects and name them individually. Resize and position the leg to fit the blueprint. For now, we're just gonna leave them one-legged. You can see in this image that all the legs are the same. It'll save us some time to texture our leg and then copy it later. I forgot to make the cow's legs longer by two increments, so feel free to do that now, or you can be like me and do it later. It'll work either way. Let's create ourselves a material. In the Properties Editor, click the Materials tab. With the body object selected, 
Click this button that says new. Rename this material to something like cow skin. I want to add some nodes to this material, so let's switch our timeline editor to the shader editor. As you can see, our material is in this editor as well. Just like in the 3D viewport, when you hit Shift A here, it brings up the add menu, allowing you to add new nodes to your material. Under the texture tab, select image texture. Click open on this image texture and navigate to your cow skin texture, Dropbox link in the description. Connect its color output to the base color input of the shader node. This big green principled node is a shader node. There's quite a few different shaders that have various properties, but the principled BSDF shader is the one I most frequently use these days. So if we go up into our viewport and switch the viewport shading over to material view, wait a few seconds and you'll see some gross looking cow textures on your cow body. Let's make the whole cow look gross temporarily by selecting each object and changing the material in the first slot to our cow skin material. You can look at your textures by switching into the image editor and selecting the texture file at the top menu drop down tab. Notice how our texture looks like what you'd expect in Minecraft, but the texture on the cow looks blurry and bad. Step one to fixing this. Back to the shader editor. On the material, change the interpolation from linear to closest. Now we can see our individual pixels, which looks a bit better, but something still isn't looking quite right. We now need to tell Blender how we want our texture laid out on our objects. For this, we'll go into the UV editor. We need to cut up our objects so that we can get the faces to lay flat on this image. This process is called UV unwrapping. With the body selected, tab into edit mode. In most cases, you can decide how you want to unwrap your objects based on preference. In this case, we're trying to match our UVs to an already existing texture, so it'll be slightly more work. In edit mode on the body object, switch to edge select. I'm going to select these seven edges by holding shift while I select. Hit control E to bring up the edge menu. There's all sorts of things we can do with these edges, but what we're currently looking for is mark seam. The edges with seams will turn red. Hit A to select all, and U to bring up the unwrap menu. Just the plain old unwrap will work. Notice how we have our shape laid out flat now in the UV editor. Switch to face select and select a face. These two arrows in the upper left corner of the UV editor are called sync selection. This option will allow you to keep your selection synchronized between the UV editor and the viewport. We can't really see what we're doing with the material in wireframe mode, so switch back into material view. The udder is going to stand out, so that'll help us orient our UV layout. I'm just going to grab this face, and as I suspected, our UVs are the wrong way around. That's an easy fix. Hit A over the UV editor to select our entire UV map, and then hit R and type in 180. This will rotate our UV map 180 degrees. Now if we slide it into position, you can see it's the right way around. Since we're dealing with such a low resolution image, it would be handy to have a way to snap it directly to the pixels. Luckily, there is such an option. Under the UV menu, scroll down to snap to pixel, pixel, pixel. <laughs> scroll down to snap to pixel and select corner. Turn off sync select and in the 3D viewport, select the entire mesh. With vertex select active in the UV menu, start moving the UV map around to match how it should look. First, I'm just gonna snap all the vertices to the pixel grid to make it easier to work with. As far as I could tell by looking at some of the screenshots of a Minecraft cow, the UV map is laid out kind of weird. And currently, when I try to move one face's vertices, the connecting face will move as well. To get around this, turn off sync select and select an individual face in the 3D viewport. Down the UV editor, we can move this face's UVs into position without affecting any of the other faces. You might find face select in the 3D viewport easier. You could also mark every edge as a seam and then move each face around freely in the UV editor more easily. And that's pretty much the body done. I think I have this front face messed up a little bit, but I'll fix it later. Now for the head. It's the exact same process. Mark whichever edges you want to be seams, Control e Same with the horn. With the horn selected, unwrap it with U. Rotate it by 90 degrees, scout down a bit, and put it over in this little grain horn area <laughs> on the texture. Little grain horn area. Try not to lose any faces while scaling. You'll really never run into this issue, except for while texturing with pixel art. If you need to move a face by itself, select only it in the viewport. Let's just delete this other horn and copy the finished one over. Select part of it and hit Control L to select the rest of it. X brings up the delete menu, and use delete whatever. Most of these options will work to delete the selection. With the horn selected in the viewport, go into front ortho view, enable snapping to increment, and shift D to duplicate. Drag the horn over to the other side. Now let's get the face unwrapped properly-ish. Select a part of it, control L to select the rest of it. 
Hit U, choose Unwrap, position the UVs. While you have snapping enabled, it gets wonky, so turn that off while working in the UV editor. Now for the legs, the same as before. Select edges, mark seams with Ctrl E, select all, U to unwrap, position the UV layout. And there's the leg. It's still two increments too short at this point, but I'll fix it soon. In the viewport, switch over to wireframe view. You may notice this disembodied orange dot that's in a weird spot. That's the object origin. Let's position it better. In edit mode, change the face select, select this top face, hit Shift S to move our 3D cursor to selected. Tab into object mode, go into the object menu. Under the set origin tab, choose origin to 3D cursor. Now the object's origin is in a spot that makes more sense. Select the body object and set its origin to geometry. This will put the origin at the object's center of mass. Select the head. In edit mode, select the back face. Move the cursor to selected with Shift S. And in the object mode, set origin to 3D cursor. The object's origins work as rotation pivot points. So with the origin set up in this manner, you'll be able to pose the cow pretty easily without even rigging it. In object mode, go into front orthographic view, enable snapping, and duplicate the leg object with Shift D. Move it into position. Hold Shift to select both front legs. In right ortho view, hit Shift D to duplicate both legs and move them to where the back legs go. Name these leg objects something that makes sense. Now go into material view. Look, it's a cow. The Minecraft cows have udders. Feel free to try your hand at that. I'm going to go in the shader editor and change the material's roughness. Fur generally isn't very reflective and neither is anything in Minecraft. So it's safe to put it the roughness at one, I think. All right, let's fix some stuff. One second real quick. In object mode, shift select the legs. Tab into edit mode. Enable face select and select the four bottom faces. Inside ortho view, enable snapping and drag these faces down two increments. And there you go, a perfect cow. You can rotate the legs and they behave kind of like in the game. In the transform menu, you can lock the Y and Z rotation so that you can only have it rotate on the X axis, makes it easier to pose. But if we move the body, nothing else comes with it. Select the leg, go into the Object Constraints tab. In the drop-down menu, choose Child of. Select the eyedropper next to the target and click the body. Since our cow's body isn't zeroed out, the leg will move. Just hit Set Inverse. Do the same with the rest of the legs and the head. Now you've got a simple little cow that you can pose. No armature needed, although you'd want to put one in if you were thinking to animate the cow. And you can zero all these out in the Transforms menu to reset it. However, if you do want to add an armature to your model, in object mode, switch into wireframe. Hit Shift A and add a single bone. Position this bone inside the cow's body. In edit mode, rotate it by negative 90. The actual rotation of the bones doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is the location of the origin of the leg and head bones. In edit mode, hit Shift A to add a new bone. Tab into object mode and select the front left leg. Go into edit mode and with face select active, select the upper face. Hit Shift S and select Cursor to Selected. Tab back into Object Mode and select the armature. Tab into Edit Mode, hit Shift S and choose Selection to Cursor. At the top of the screen, change the Transform's pivot point to the 3D cursor. Rotate this bone by 180 degrees. As you can see, it now rotates around the 3D cursor. Grab the bottom bone handle on the Z axis and pull it down to match the length of the leg. Again, for this model, the positioning of this end doesn't matter. It'll be easier to animate if the bone is straight, however. Do the same for the back leg. In object mode, select it, and in edit mode, move the cursor to the top face. In object mode, select the armature, and in edit mode, duplicate the leg bone with Shift D. And move selection to cursor with Shift S. Do the same with the head, except use its back face. Cursor to selected, duplicate a bone, Shift S, selection to cursor. Rotate it by 90 degrees. Slide the front on the Y axis. Now in edit mode, name these bones however you want to. Put a dot L at the end of the two leg bones to indicate that it's on the left side. Other options include these. In the bone tab, under relations, click the parent category and choose body for all of the leg and head bones. Now select the two leg bones and under the armature menu, choose symmetrize. This will create right side leg bones for us. Select the body bone and switch into pose mode. This is a mode specific to armatures. We can see that the armature moves correctly, but the cow objects don't do anything yet. So in object mode, shift select all of the cow objects and shift select the armature last. Now hit Ctrl P to bring up the parenting menu, choose with empty groups. 
select the body object, tab into edit mode, select all, and under the object data properties tab, notice the vertex groups has our bone names in it. Select the body bone and click assign with a weight of one. Do the same for the legs, assign the corresponding bone to each leg object. The front left, front right, back left, and back right. Make sure to select all of the vertices in each object before hitting assign. Do the same with the head and the head bone. Switch your pivot point to median or individual origin. In object mode, select the armature and go into pose mode. And now you can see that our armature controls our cow's objects. We can also set up our bones so that they don't bend in the wrong direction. Go into the bone constraint tab, which only appears in pose mode, and choose limit rotation. Choose local space and disable the rotation on the Y and Z axis. It appears our bone is oriented wrong, but that's an easy fix. Select all in edit mode. Under the armature menu, select bone roll. Recalculate bone roll. In this case, global plus Y will work just fine. Go back into pose mode and now it works as expected. But you can do all sorts of things with your armatures. One handy thing is under the armature tab, go into viewport display and enable in front. This will allow you to see the armature through the other objects, making it easier to select and pose. You can add constraints to the other leg bones if you so choose. Bones can be transformed just like any other object and can easily be reset by selecting them and hitting Alt-R to reset rotation, Alt-G for location, and Alt-S for scale. Thank you for watching. Overall, a pretty straightforward and easy model. But it's not like you're going to make the best selling game of all time using nothing but cubes. I own three copies. Next time, we're going to cover something a little more complicated. A Harvest Moon Cow. Stay safe, love you, goodbye!